Okay, um, we've been working on a lab where we tossed the ball up in the air and above a motion detector and then collected data for it as it moved up and down. I have some data for that, so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys. Okay. Here it is. Um, I've got a position time graph, a velocity time graph, and an acceleration time graph. Now in the lab it said, alright, let's go through and find when the object is moving up, when the object is moving down, and let's label those on our graph. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to say, all right, let's export these graphs, uh, open in, and I'm going to choose Notability, and then I can add it to a note, or I can create a new note. Um, I'm going to add to another note, and I have lots, but I want to put it on the free fall lab okay. and so now it'll be at the end of this lab okay. so here are my graphs I thought I had turned those all off oh, well. here are my graphs and I'm supposed to label these parts uh, so I'm going to grab my pen and use red okay. and it says label where you're just holding it okay, that would be this part holding you can tell because the position over here is fairly constant the velocity here is zero and there's really no acceleration I wiggled a little bit but nothing going on okay then it says label the part where the object is moving up okay moving up <clears throat> and we can tell because the velocity became positive the position time graph goes up uh, and the acceleration is negative, but there's this weird little spike here. That's right where I'm tossing the ball. Okay, I I pushed it up, it moved up, it got faster, positive acceleration. Okay, and it says where the graph, where the object is moving down. Okay? That would be this part, and we can tell because the velocity is negative. Right, velocity is negative, positions curving back down, and the acceleration is still negative. Okay? And then finally, over here is where I caught it, and now it's not moving yet. Okay, so we've answered all those parts to this lab, and now we got a little bit of questions to go through. But that's that's the meat of this. Okay, uh, so let me scroll up on my lab and see what we got. Okay, it says, okay, we've labeled we've labeled those regions. Does anything about the acceleration time graph indicate a direction change? Huh? I'm going to go back to my acceleration time graph and I see uh, while the ball was moving, here's what my acceleration looks like. Okay, It's a fairly constant line below the axis, so no, there's not a lot of anything in there that shows me that it changed direction. The acceleration was constant the whole time. Okay. In graphical analysis, determine the position, velocity, and acceleration at these specific points, the ones below. Select any data point on a graph to read the numeric value at that point on the position versus time graph. Locate the maximum height of the ball and record the time and position below. Well, I have the graphs down below, so I'm going to take a look at it. Okay, right there at the top of that parabola, it's not, it's it's at its highest point. And if I look down at my graph, that happened at about 1.8 seconds or so, and it looks like it's about mm, 0.95 meters up. Okay, so I'm going to say. 1.9.95 good to go I mean it's it's just an estimate what was the velocity of the ball at this time well uh, that time here's the velocity okay let me clear all this so it's easier to see what I'm doing okay we're interested in a very specific part of this graph okay it's basically all the times when the ball is at its highest point and so I'm going to draw that line all the way through here okay and there it is there's the line that's all the points we're interested in so that was time 1.8 and its position was about 0.95 meters this is time 1.8 and if we look at the velocity right there that's where it's crossing the axis so that looks to be um, zero right so what was the velocity of the ball at this point zero meters per second why would that make sense? Well, it's the highest point, so the ball's not going up anymore, but it hasn't started to come back down yet either, so 
velocity is zero. It's changing direction right there. What was the acceleration of the ball at this time? Well, if we look at our acceleration graph right in here, that looks to be almost negative 10 meters, so I'm going to go with negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay. All right. On the velocity time graph, select the portion of the ball where the ball was in the air and perform a curve fit. Okay. So I do want graphical analysis for this. So I'm going to go back to graphical analysis. So there's graphical analysis and we want a curve fit on the velocity time graph. So if I select the portion of the velocity time graph where the object is moving, so this portion of my graph, uh, and I'd say, all right, let's do a curve fit, and since that looks like a line, I'm gonna choose a linear, it gives me the slope of the line uh, and the the y-intercept, the b, y equals mx plus b, right? And so we're supposed to record that. I'm going to go ahead and just hold up a minute because it also does a curve fit on the position time graph and we're supposed to record some information for that. Okay, so I'm going to find kind of the same time interval on my position time graph as I have on my velocity time graph and choose the curve fit. And since this one looks like a parabola, I'm going to choose quadratic. Okay. And a couple things I want to draw your attention to. This root mean square error down at the bottom right, the closer to zero that is, the better the fit is. Okay, So if you have something that's not zero, you should probably try a different curve fit, or not close to zero. They're never probably going to be right at zero. The other thing this lab asks us for is... Um, the mean velocity during this time interval. So I've got that section highlighted and I'm going to go ahead and turn on statistics. Okay, uh, And then instead of jumping back and forth from this graph and notability, I'm just going to export this whole thing to notability. And I'm going to have two pages there now. Okay, So I'm going to add to this note. OK. And now I can answer these questions. Uh, without too much difficulty. So, here's my graphs again. My velocity time data is right there. The slope is negative 9.4 and the y-intercept is 16.7. So in the data table up here, I'm going to have negative 9.4 and I can't remember, around 17 meters per second. Okay. This was meters per second per second. Um, then step five, repeat step five for the XT graph. Okay. So I've got this information. A is negative 4.7, close enough. Negative 4.7. B is 16.67. 16.67 meters per second. And C is negative 13.764. So negative 13.8. All right. And then the average acceleration, if we come and look at our statistics, says the mean was negative 9.6. So negative 9.6. All right. Write kinematic equation number two below. Well, kinematic equation number two says uh, the position of an object is given by one half the acceleration times the time squared plus the initial velocity, plus the initial position, no, times time, right? Right, all right. Well, if we're looking at the equation for position, ax squared plus bx plus c, and a is the term that goes on the square, then it corresponds to this one-half a right here, so one-half a. b corresponds to v naught, and C corresponds to X naught. Okay? According to this equation, what was the acceleration of the ball? Well, if A equals half A, <laughs> then negative 4.7, right, my value for A, equals one half acceleration, multiply both sides by two, and I get A equals 9.4 meters per second per second. Of course, it's negative because this was negative. Okay. Kinematic equation number one, final velocity equals initial velocity times, oops, that's not what it is at all, 
final velocity equals acceleration times time plus v naught. Right? That means A corresponds to acceleration and B corresponds to initial velocity. And if we take a look, um, the acceleration of the ball, according to that, is negative 9.4 meters per second. And the initial velocity was 17, and that one had 16. So these are all close. Okay. Um, the acceleration, according to the position time graph, is about negative 9.2 or 9.4. The acceleration according to the velocity time graph is about negative 9.4, and the average acceleration over the time interval was about negative 9.6. Okay. What caused the ball's velocity to change? That was gravity. Every single time, gravity was pulling it down. So it slowed it down on the way up, and it sped it up on the way down. Okay. And this is the crux of this lab. Okay. When an object's moving only due to gravity, and the only thing affecting its motion is gravity, the object is in free fall. Note that the ball was actually in free fall while it was moving up and while it was falling back down. So free fall doesn't indicate a direction, it just means the only thing acting on it is gravity.